What is the role of a leader? Well, the first one clearly is to be the chief meaning officer. To let everyone in the place know where you're going, why you're going there, and most importantly, what's in it for them to get there with you. People like to talk about where they're going, why they're going there, but they don't, they always leave out the third thing. When you come into a new job and you say, we want to change, change is great, we got to do it. You forget, people hate change. You've got to explain what's in it for them to change with you. So be the chief meaning officer and give meaning to every one of those people that are out there doing that job so that they understand why you're going where you're going. Yeah, and they know what's in it for them. Better job, more pay, more flexibility, maybe nothing if you can't say nothing. But you got to understand that's one of them. Another part of a job, your job is to not give all these directives and not be the person getting rid of the clutter. Getting rid of clutter is a huge deal. You can't all of a sudden have bureaucracy. Let's go here, let's go there. They have 20 rules to stop the employees from getting there. You've got to break down all those little silos that occur, all those little bureaucrats who, do, who are checking the boxes in some layers, slowing you down. You've got to be the person in the, we always use this analogy of curling. You see it every four years in, in, in the Olympics with the broom out in front of the thing. You've got to be brooming away the stuff that's in the way. You've got to be the chief broomer out there to get rid of things so people can act and do things. You've got to have, if you want to be, in my experience, and I've looked at thousands of managers in my lifetime, You've got to have a generosity gene. It's got to be in your body. You've got to love to see people promoted. You can't, you can't have a jealous vein where you, you can't, oh, Joe got promoted and I should have got that job, or Mary got this and Pete should have got it, or whatever. You've got to enjoy people's success. You've got to love people's success. You've got to get in their skin and really be excited as hell for them. You gotta love to give raises. You gotta be turned on giving bonuses. It's gotta make you feel great. And not, geez, I gave him a bonus and I didn't get one that big. None of those feelings. You gotta just get over them. And if I look at all the leaders I've seen, the best ones I've seen have this generosity chain. Ask yourself, do you have it? Or do you have a little small, gene in there that's killing you and give raises, killing you to see other successes and jealous in your body. You can't have it. Brush it out. Clean it out. And then you go to work every day, finally, to really have fun. Are your people having fun? Make, find all kinds of ways to win. There are small victories all the time and celebrate every one of them. We found a way to bring a keg in on everything. Uh, find a way, find a way to make little victories, big victories. And if you get a lot of little victories, you'll get a big victory when you add them all together. But think of the job that way. Work is fun. And your job is to make it fun if you're a leader. Don't be some grinding horse's ass. If you're a boy, slap yourself. Think of the excitement and fun you can have in your job. Make it fun, be the chief fun officer. So in my view, you've got a huge responsibility, most of you. God gave you a job where you are responsible for people's lives. It's a big deal. You got families you're responsible for. Make it a big success for them. You got one of the luxuries of life to impact people's lives. Grab it, squeeze it, and take advantage of it.